Hey everyone, Gage Ryan here, and today we are talking Dark World. So, Dark World's a deck I've played uh, off and on since about 2013 or so. I remember in uh, Dragon Spellbook format, where I was playing a, a triple Eradicator, triple Skill Drain, malefic kind of turbo Dark World deck, and it was so much fun. It was actually a great meta call against uh, what people were playing at the time. And so since then, I've, I've just always loved this deck and I've always played it. And so when I heard they got a second structure deck, I was I was pretty pumped. And I mean, the new support, I mean, I feel that it, it doesn't really increase the ceiling on Dark World per se, but it definitely makes the deck more playable in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! When before, like, they negate your Dark World dealings, you probably lose, you know what I mean? So, uh, I play the deck a little differently than most people. I mean, you know, if you've seen my channel before, Big Shock, I play a stun list. So, like, I, I don't like hand loop decks. I've never been a fan of hand loop decks, and so I decided to just kind of play a strategy that I was more comfortable with and that uh, I felt would kind of make the deck a little more balanced, I guess. So, I won't uh, hold this up any longer. Let's get right into the video. So. You got a triple rainbow. This card's fantastic. I mean, just search search for Grafa. I mean, you can potentially you can search for Silva too in other cards, but I actually don't play Silva. So and then three Grafa uh, staple. I see. I see some people that play two, and I see some lists that are top that just play two because you can search it off rainbow. But I don't know. I just like having access to like Grafa can pop right, and this can search Grafa like they're and they're both good in the graveyard, so they serve multiple purposes. So I like just having access to the third Grafa sometimes. And this isn't a hugely extensive Dark World engine. You're not going to see a ton of draw cards or anything like that. I think I actually play more traps than I do spells, believe it or not. But it's just a, it's a case where the engine will get you far enough so that you're set up to play like Grafa Rainbow Beatdown, or you can go into the extra deck, or you can play your rank eights. I mean, like being able to end on like Overlord plus a rank eight, like Hope Harbinger or Felgrand, plus back row is a very solid opening, and that's usually what you're going for with this deck. So then, Triple Genta. This card's fucking fabulous. Dark World has always been an A and B kind of deck where it needs multiple pieces, and this is kind of the first card of its type that can have multiple usages. Where, like, not only does it act as a Gravekeeper's Commandant, but then you special summon it so that you can bounce it for Grafa. Like, it's great. So, you need it. Through Snow. Uh, I thought Snow was amazing before, and now it's even better. So, uh, great card. Gotta have it. So then Triple Brow. Uh, I'm not totally sure about this yet, but for now it's in here. Helps move the engine along, gives you an extra draw. It is another normal summon to bounce for Grafa, so it does have some usage in the deck still. And then three Beige, something that would seem like heresy to me, uh, pre-structure deck, but I think it's actually pretty solid now. I mean, I would definitely play at least two, but I like having access to the third. It keeps your, your discard outlets for as limited as they are in this kind of a list. It keeps them consistent. You know, it helps you loop for Rainbow, loop for Grafa. Great card. And so that's it for the Dark World monsters. I don't play Silver or Gold. You just can't normal summon them. And in this kind of a deck where your discard outlets aren't as vast, I think that it's just kind of better to stick with cards like Beige that you can normal summon over and over again because like even there, there are times where like you'll have just gates rainbow and then like a floodgate or two and so for those cases it's better to draw into other support cards as opposed to like dark world dealings let's say so then for the last monster believe it or not is ash yes i know a uh, gauge what is it with you and your obsession with ash blossom i really do think it's one of the best cards in the game like it just shuts down so many things it's great against branded fusion I just always feel so much more comfortable having this in my hand. And like I said, this isn't a turbo draw deck. We're not playing uh, loads of combo cards, so you can afford to kind of play a little bit of a slower game with cards like Ash. So that's it for the monsters under the spells. You got three gates, staple. I don't know why some people play two, play three. Three accession. This card's fabulous. I love this card. It's so good. You know, I mean, just be able to trigger so many graveyard effects, be able to, to bring it back to your hand, and it's a quick play. I mean, the card is fantastic. Dark World Fusion, as I call it, is just broken, and being able to search it off snow just makes it even better. You got two puppetry. Uh, we'll see how this card works as the format progresses, but for now I like it. Being able to banish three and then pitch a Dark World monster is really good. I mean, everything's graveyard to some degree nowadays outside of like Flunder. And last spell card, card D. 
card destruction. <laughs> I draw this more than I should actually, but it's just such a good card. Uh, it's outrageous being able to draw three more, three or four more cards and then trigger all your dark world monsters is just outrageous. So that's it for spells under the traps. There are a lot more than you would normally be accustomed to in Dark World, but like I said, I think everybody's seen turbo draw builds and hand loop builds a million times, so I wanted to come at it from a little bit of a, a different angle, and like I said, it'd be an angle that I would be a lot more comfortable playing. So, first, three skill drain. Love this card to death. Thank you, Konami, for giving us three of it. It's so nice to have this card back, and it's <laughs> it's so outrageous. You go opening turn, you have a skill drain. I mean, your opponent is in such deep shit. I, I love it. I will always play this card. It's really hard to, like, most of the time when I play Dark World, skill drain is in the main deck. Like, it's just kind of hard to talk me out of playing it in the main deck. I mean, sometimes you just can't afford to, or if you're playing like a super heavy combo build, skill drain isn't really optimal in those cases, but I just freaking love this card, and I love its interactions in Dark World. It doesn't hurt you at all one single solitary bit. I just love the card. It's probably my favorite trap card of all time, so. That or Eradicator. So then in addition to skill drain, you got two Gozen and two Rivalry. So like I said, we'll see how this progresses throughout the format. Maybe these become some other kind of floodgate. I mean, I've thought about uh, There Can Be. I mean, There Can Be, believe it or not, you can play under it because like I said, if you just have Grapha and like There Can Be, it's really hard to get around that just by itself. And then you have other support cards to go with it usually. But uh, for now it's two Gozen and two Rivalry. So just having three skill drain and then these four floodgates, I mean, makes it so that your, your opponent's always playing left-handed basically. And so then being able to beat their face in with Grapha while they're playing left-handed and being able to stop their various other plays with cards like Skill Drain is just really tough for a lot of decks to deal with, especially with a deck that can spam beaters as consistently as Dark World can. So then last card, round the deck out, three Dynamiscus. Uh, triggers Dark World effects, takes things off the field, target any card you want. Very good card in Dark World. And the ability to trigger cards like Rainbow, Grapha, or you can like pitch Beige and then bounce it back for Grapha. Like it just keeps your engine going basically. So I like the card a lot. So that's it for the main deck. I'll show you guys a, a peek at my side deck right now. A lot of it is theory, but these are cards that I think would be uh, very good to play in the deck. Uh, so first, I don't know how many Kaiju I'm going to play. Right now it's one. Uh, Radeon's just really good. I mean, it's a it's a dark, so it helps play into Super Poly. Uh, you know, if your opponent has some kind of barrier statue in play or something, this might be able to get around it. Just good card. Uh, Pankratops, good card. Pretty much in every extra deck I play. It's just great. Uh, Super Poly, which I just think should be in every extra deck, basically. I mean, card's so damn good. And the fact that people, the, this is Dark World, so they're all darks, so this can help. You can help Super Poly like a single monster sometimes. So right now, Drag Down is in the side uh, because there are times where when you're going first, you don't really want Ash Blossom as much. You would much rather have Drag Down in that case. And so, you know, okay, I'm going first. I don't really need Ash Blossom as much. I mean, you know, sometimes you don't put this in, like I wouldn't really put this in against like, let's say Branded because I think I'd still rather have Ash Blossom because Ashing the Branded Fusion just stops their whole turn basically. But generally speaking, if you're going first, it's better to have Drag Down, so. The, the main deck is all about optimizing going first or second, so. That's why I kind of think about playing Imperms on the deck, maybe in place of the Dynamiscuses, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, third Puppetry, you gotta have it. So right now, two Regekis, which are just kind of, you know, good board clearers and whatnot. I think it's a better card than it gets credit, but I might take this out. I th these might be Nibiru's, so we'll, we'll see. Cosmic Cyclone, just one for now. Feather Duster, uh, obvious. And last card is Dark Smog, which, I mean, this card you definitely, I would play in the side deck personally. It's really good in addition to Dark World Puppetry at just keeping shit out of your opponent's graveyard. But also Dark Smog, if anybody remembers this card, if anyone remembers playing against old school Dark World when they would have like multiple Smogs in the main deck, I think a lot of people can attest to this, that if you played against that deck and you didn't get rid of Dark Smog, you lost almost every game you played against the deck. It's just, it's so good, it serves two purposes in the exact same card. And then on top of that, like being able to trigger your Dark World effects, like Grapha gets to pop an extra card, like it's so difficult to deal with. Like you have to get rid of this card if you play, if you play against Dark World, you have to get rid of this. So. But yeah, that's it uh, in terms of the deck. So like obviously for the extra deck, you're gonna wanna play your, I, I don't have a full extra deck yet, you guys. But uh, these, th the fusion obviously, like I play three, I don't know why people only play two. But uh, the only 
rank four that I've made pretty much the entire time in my testing is Baguska. Um, Dweller sometimes too, so we'll see about that, but right now just Baguska is really all I've needed. I haven't needed anything else as a, as a rank four. But uh, also in terms of rank eights, you should be playing uh, Heliopolis, uh, Franken, uh, Zombie Stein. You know, there's a couple good ones out there. Felgrand, uh, Hope Harbinger. But uh, I don't have a finalized extra deck yet. So that's about it in terms of the deck list. Uh, comments, I really love Dark World. I always have. You know, I always will. Playing the deck off and on for a decade, basically. Uh, feels so good to have fresh cards to play in the deck. The deck was basically unplayable uh, with all the rise of hand traps and, and multi-negates and whatnot. Like, the Dark World deck just couldn't play at all, basically. And so now that we have a little bit of breathing room, so to speak, I'm really happy to see the deck uh, have some success again. So that's about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the list. I hope you enjoyed the, the change up. I know most people play in the, the hand loop builds and it's definitely the most powerful version of the deck for sure. But I just wanted to play something that was a little more akin to my play style personally. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave any suggestions you have in the comments and I'll see you soon.